Okay. Okay, so today, today's lesson is done by Dr. Wojciech from Poland. The topic will be coronary bifurcation lesion devices and uh, uh, clinical studies and updates on PCI techniques. So please, Wojciech. Hello, everyone. Thank you for invitation for those uh, for those presentations. So generally, uh, as we know, Parkinson's coronary intervention is the recommended method for treatment significant stenosis in coronary artery disease. However, we should also know that nearly 20% for from those all of PCIH which we are doing doing daily, there are PCI in the area of the bifurcation lesion. Generally, bifurcation lesion we can uh, differ as the left main bifurcation lesion and the non-left main bifurcation lesion. And according to the European Bifurcation Club, the classification which should be assessed to to address the kind of the bifurcation lesion is the Medina classification. The Medina classification has been explained by Sil by, by Silvia Ivanchik in previous lesson lessons. Generally, bifurcation lesion has a different anatomy, different localization, but is always a big challenge to perform probably uh, properly the, the bifurcation lesion using PCI techniques. And according to the sub-analysis of the syntax study, which assess patients also with bifurcation lesion and without bifurcation lesion, the results from that sub-study show that patients who had a PCI in the area of the bifurcation lesion had worse outcomes during the long-term follow-up in terms of target lesion failure and, and their those patients had worse outcomes during long-term follow-up. However, there were no any adverse uh, higher level in terms of maze during the uh, long term of the uh, follow-up. Uh, moreover, we should also assess the type of the bifurcation lesion using the type of the Medina classification. Here you see the results from the Ultimaster DS registry. It is quite big registry, which assesses more than 4,000 coronary bifurcation lesion procedures. The, among those 4,000 coronary bifurcation lesion procedures, uh, which has been performed by PCI, the most common coronary bifurcation distributions were Medina 111, and Medina 110. In the third part, uh, kind of the bifurcation lesion. Uh, was... Excuse me, excuse me to interrupt, Wojciech. Um, I wanted to ask uh, um, um, Stefania, Claudia, and Simona if is to you uh, quite clear what is a Medina classification? Do you remember the previous lesson or do you want uh, um, another explication of this classification? No, no, for me it's clear uh, from the lesson, uh, previous lesson. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. So please uh, go ahead. Uh, so thank you. So most common type of the Medina classification is Medina 111, later on 110 Medina classification. In, in third part is Medina 010. So the, here we have three most often type of the bifurcation lesion according to the Medina classification. However, we should also pay attention to the Medina 110 because those kind of the bifurcation lesion gives us the highest number of uh, adverse events during the long-term follow-up as, as, as uh, the target lesion failure. Moreover, the Medina classification 001 gives us more adverse events in compared to Medina 111, which is a true bifurcation uh, lesion. A Medina classification, it is not only one classification which, which assess the bifurcation uh, lesion. We also have the quite interesting and the new classification of the bifurcation lesion, which is ABCD classification for the coronary artery bifurcation disease. Um, it is quite new uh, kind of uh, bifurcation lesion because the those kind of uh, classification give us much more information than Medina classification. Medina classification give us information around the distribution of disease, which, which has been defined as the stenosis more than 50%. Here we have the definition of stenosis more than 70%. And in the ABCD classification for coronary artery uh, bifurcation disease, that classification gives us much more information. Each segment is given a letter if considered significant, and if not, signific not significant, no letter would be assigned. And a capital letter is used if the vessel diameter is more than 
3.5 millimeter, quite a small is used if the diameter is less than 3.5 millimeters. So let we, let we go to the example for those kind of um, classification A, B, C, D for the bifurcation lesion. A is responsible for left main, B is responsible for LAD, C is responsible for C complex, and D is responsible for the intermediate branch. And here you have the example of the type of the bifurcation lesion according to the ABCD classification. And here in the left part, you see the big number of A, B, and C because left main is more than 3.5 millimeters. LAD is also more, uh, higher than uh, 3.5 millimeters and the circumflex is more, greater than 3.5 millimeters. So all of those stenosis is above 70 percent uh, 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 percent and so the 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 classification is a b c with big number however in lower part uh, of those presentation you have the uh, the example of bifurcation lesion a b c however b and c is smaller because lad is lower than 3.5 millimeters circumflex is also smaller than than 3.5 millimeters. However, left main is uh, is greater than 3.5 millimeters. So we have A big and B and C is the small letter in that type of those uh, before bifurcation. Um, so far has been published many studies which try to assess how to uh, to treat patient with with uh, with bifurcation lesion with left main bifurcation lesion. Do we should we treat one stand technique or two stand technique? And um, here you see the technical evolution of the bifurcation and PCI lesions. Here you see the trial, the, most of the trial has been started in early in 1918. However, however, uh, the, the, the highest level of the, of the trials has been published to 2000, uh, to, from 2000 to 2020 years. Um, uh, as I said previously, most of those uh, studies uh, uh, divide, pac divide uh, patients to the left main and non-left main bifurcation lesion and one stand technique versus two stand technique. And here you see the results of the big registry, which assess more than two and a half thousand patients with the bifurcation lesion, with left main and non-left main bifurcation lesion. And long-term follow-up uh, in uh, long-term follow-up of the patients who were treated in left main bifurcation lesion showed that patients who were treated by one stand technique in compared to two stand technique had better outcomes in terms of target lesion failure. However, in contrast to patients with left main bifurcation, patients with non-left left main bifurcation who were treated a two st a one stand technique did not have better outcomes in compared to two stand technique. So that study showed that during long-term follow-up in left main bifurcation lesion, we have better outcomes when we use the one stand technique. However, there is no any significant difference when we use the uh, two, uh, one or two stand technique in non left main bifurcation lesion in terms of target lesion failure. Uh, those study is in line with meta analysis of left main PCI bifurcation lesion, which has been published in 2020, which also compares single versus double stent uh, strategies in 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 bifurcation lesion. Those meta analysis consists of two randomized trials and six observational studies, which assess more than 4,000 patients. So the, the results from those studies show that uh, that during the long-term follow-up, patients who were treated by one stand technique in compared to two stand technique have better outcomes in terms of target lesion revascularization and MACE uh, as, as the outcome has been assessed in that uh, study. The other study, which is quite interesting study, but quite a different study, which previously, which also compares sim, uh, uh, which also compare one stand strategy versus two stand strategy. However, uh, the authors um, in that registry uh, compare simple simple versus complex left main bifurcation uh, standings, and. Um, 
it's quite important that uh, the complex slab line bifurcation extending but has been defined as, as the side branch diameter more than 70% stenosis and side branch lesion length of more than 10 millimeters. So in those study, uh, complex bifurcation lesions had a long, a long length of the significant stenosis in the side branch. And those studies show that two-stand technique jailed and numerically lower three years cardiac mortality, regardless of left main bar bifurcation uh, complexity. So we have here quite a different result that was observed in the previous study. However, we uh, over here, uh, the authors compare simple and complex left main uh, bifurcation, uh, bifurcation uh, study. The first study, which has been, uh, which assessed left main bifurcation, uh, left main bifurcation uh, disease, and which has been, uh, which has been um, assessed as the randomized control trial, is the ECB main randomized control trial, which has been prepared in 2016 and published in Euro Intervention. And that study compare patients uh, who are treated by one stand technique, which has been defined as the provisional uh, provisional P PCI technique. And uh, the, the second arm of, in those study was two stand strategy, which has been assessed as the culotte or decayed mini crash, uh, mini crash. And the long term outcomes of 20, 12, 12 months. Um, a follow-up showed that there were no any significant difference according to the composite endpoint as a dead myocardial infarction or revascularization. However, indeed there were no uh, there were no no also significant difference in terms of dead myocardial infarction and uh, revascularization. So in contrast to that study, we also have the other uh, randomized control trials, the definition A2 randomized control trial, which has been published in 2020. Those trial consists of more than 600 patients with complex a complex bifurcation lesion. However, it is also important that in in those studies there are patients with not on, not on, with left main and a non left main bifurcation lesion. So in contrast to the previous study. Uh, the long-term results of the definition to randomized control trial show that uh, patients who are treated by a uh, two-stand technique had better outcomes in terms of target lesion revascularization, target vessel myocardial infarction, uh, and a target uh, lesion. Yeah, maybe maybe we can uh, go a little bit deeper into which techniques have been uh, adopted here in the two-stand group, and um, in the provisional group, uh, how many patients underwent two stenting instead of just one stent in the main vessel? Uh, so we, uh, in the provisional group, we had three, uh, for, uh, 329 patients and in two stent yeah. group, 300. But in these 329, how many underwent two stenting and how many one stent? Do you have this information? This is important to understand uh, why there is this big difference between one and two stents uh, and uh, this difference also according to previous studies. No, I don't know. I don't know how, uh, what, uh, right now, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, technique has been used in, in two, two stent, uh, in, in two stent uh, group. Yeah, these are two important uh, points. One is to know which stenting technique has been adopted in the two stenting group and two, how many patients in the provisional group underwent, in the end, a second stent implantation? So in, I, uh, right now, I don't have, I, I don't okay. remember the, uh, the data. Okay. All right. Uh, so we also have the, 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 the other study, Syntax 2 study, which the sub analysis of the syntax two study, which also assess patients uh, with bifurcation lesion, and show that there were no any significant difference during the long term follow up in terms of maize target lesion failure and uh, and stent uh, and stent uh, thrombosis. Uh, one month ago, it has been published quite interesting meta analysis, which also assess patients with bifurcation lesion, single versus double stent strategy. And here we have also the information what kind of 
what kind of strategy has been performed in the uh, two stand technique, decker crash, culotte standing or crash technique. And those those uh, those studies showed that the, in the breast specific uh, sensitivity analysis, which included patients with true bifurcation lesion, showed a lower showed a lower rate of maze following two stents uh, techniques. However, those studies also showed that the um, network uh, meta analysis revealed that the DK crash that the DK crash was associated with the lowest or uh, with the lowest uh, maze uh, rate. Um, as as I said in the in the beginning, we have also the kind of the uh, the, 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 the important uh, type of the Medina classification is the Medina classification zero. A zero or one type of the classification because those of uh, those of uh, those type of bifurcation lesion give us the highest level of the adverse events during the long uh, term of the follow up and here you see the result of the bifurcate study which which joined three other study COVID two COVID three and rain registries and assess uh, patients who had a uh, one stand strategy and two uh, stand uh, strategy. However, during the long term of the follow up, there were no any uh, uh, difference in terms of uh, maze, um, in terms of uh, when comparing one stand strategy uh, to to a stand uh, strategy. Um, this is also important during the PCI. This is also important to to assess the to uh, to, to perform the the kissing balloons and port after the 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 PCI of the bifurcation lesion. Here we have the 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 results from the RAIN cardio group study, which which um, which assess patients with bifurcation lesion, which defined patients with provisional versus two stand techniques, and uh, and assess patients uh, in the in the point of the final kissing balloons. And the results from those studies show that patients with two stand techniques, uh, two stand techniques, patients who had a final kissing balloons in comparison to who did not have final kissing balloons had better outcomes during the long-term follow-up in terms of target lesion revascularization. However, that uh, that inform that results were, were not confirmed in the provisional uh, provisional uh, technique of the bifurcation lesions. Also important point when we are doing the the bifurcation lesions PCI, it is to... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I don't know if you come back on the um, clinical um, outcome of these trials because uh, it is uh, worth mentioning that EBC, which is the European Bifurcation Club, it's an independent club from ESC, EAPCI, whatever, but it's a club of experts on bifurcation. Um, I would say quite differently from uh, the meta-analysis published this year that you show is uh, is uh, suggesting to to go for provisional stenting in the vast majority of bifurcation lesions, also true bifurcation lesions. So uh, how do you interpret this position of the EBC as compared to this data, which actually at least with DK crash is showing an advantage over the two stenting technique? The the the, uh, the the data the the trial which has been performed by EBC or has been performed in left main uh, the, the disease there were uh, true bifurcation lesion which showed that, that there were no significant uh, difference between one and two stand strategy and in that in that uh, uh, that results the new stand uh, device has been used. However, as we stress in that meta-analysis, which, which we are looking at now, which is in presentation, uh, it's for me, it's difficult to, to answer that question, but what pay attention to from my point of view, that in yeah. that, that, uh, that meta-analysis has been also used the old generation uh, drug eluting uh, drug eluting stands as you hear as you see here we have we have also the data from 2000 mm. 2000 uh, 2010 and in compare for uh, and also first generation uh, dr drug eluting stands so maybe it in my opinion they could also pay uh, pay part of the long term follow up uh, which has been shown uh, in that meta meta analysis so I don't know what kind of results mm. 
authors could have if they uh, uh, if they uh, throughout the patient with first generation drug allotting stents, which has been used many years ago. Yeah, so your position is uh, quite uh, in favor of the position of EBC in terms of trying to spare the two stenting technique unless you are, you know, you are really forced to do this type of lesion because uh, provisional is not going to work. So if I understand well, this is your position. Uh, my position is uh, my position is uh, it depends of the it it depends of the situation it depends of the lesion uh, or what time of bifurcation technique should we use if the in the bifurcation lesion uh, but according to that data uh, the single stand strategy is not worse. Uh, uh, we, which has been shown in the randomized control trials. So the, we have the, the data from randomized control trials from UBC that uh, one stand technique is not it's not worse in compared to two stand uh, to two stand strategy. No, however, the EBC study EBC study is saying that uh, uh, they are similar in terms of clinical performance. One stand provisional versus two stands. So EBC main, this is the message of this study. Okay, and then the message of EBC is try to spare stents if you can manage that by means of a provisional stenting. Mm. Okay, there are two, two weights, two different weights. One is the Chinese study uh, and the Oriental study like DK Crush, which are showing how DK Crush is always better than uh, provisional. Okay, this study also as well. And on the other hand, there are the European studies showing that uh, a provisional stenting, sparing metal is not inferior to a two stenting uh, technique. So the position of EBC is that. So I wanted you to comment on that, but it's fine. It's uh, I, I personally share the, the position of EBC in terms of, uh, you know, more moderate, uh, I would say, consumption of stenting in, in complex bifurcations. Uh, so, so what is my op uh, my uh, opinion on that? Uh, I'm also in line uh, to to that to that outcomes that uh, one stand technique uh, in compared to uh, in compared to two stand technique it's it's not worse. However, we also have data mm -hmm. from other study which show that it's different. So, yeah, but, but it's okay. not it's, it's, it is. Sometimes it's, it's it, de it depends what kind of bifurcation do we have. Do we we also assess to a uh, side branch if there is the long stenosis, if there is no, if there yeah. is how, how significant it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's impossible to have a, a rule to to state a rule, but it's impossible for any type of lesion. Uh, it's just a general recommendation, but then any case is worth uh, 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 analyzing and and deciding the the, the technique. Uh, according to the clinical and uh, technical characteristics. But okay, that's fine. L let's go on. Uh, so um, so uh, intravascular image is also quite important to, uh, during the, the PCI of the bifurcation lesion. And the last uh, EC Congress that has been published, the October tri trial, we show that OCT guided PCI is associated with a lower incidence of MACE at the two years, uh, two years in compared to only angiographic guided PCI of the of the uh, bifurcation uh, bifurcation uh, lesions. So here in the end of my presentation, I will show that uh, I will say well, I would say that the goal of the uh, PCI in the bifurcation lesion is to obtain optimal results in the main vessel and to maintain physiology potency of the side branch. So it is also important to assess the stenosis in the side branch and looking forward to the EBC main results. The one stand strategy, if possible, should be it initially be considered the preferred approach for the treatment of left main bifurcation lesion. And we should also consider always spot after main branch uh, stenting, while provisional sun branch stenting should be a default technique for low risk bifurcation at, uh, and at 
two stem technique may be preferable for high risk complex uh, according to the definition uh, 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 this uh, this uh, uh, I, 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 I don't completely agree with this statement actually that uh, we should use two stenting for true bifurcation because we are discussing about true bifurcation all of these trials have uh, enrolled true bifurcations and again there are two big theories two big uh, schools uh, one is the chinese one where dk crash is working well so we should use in true bifurcation two stent technique and the other one is the huge experience deriving from ebc uh, and i'm a little bit closer to this uh, which is showing how in many true bifurcation uh, single stenting with the uh, uh, provisional stenting uh, it should be the technique that should be uh, um, uh, adopted. So I would moderate this, but it's you no, know, it's only uh, it, there is no uh, law, but just uh, uh, preferences according to the experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, the DK crash technique seems to be most favorable, but a uh, tap and cool out technique are also excellent uh, options to treat uh, bifurcation uh, bifurcation uh, lesions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wojciech, for um, presenting uh, in uh, in a timely manner uh, this uh, huge amount of clinical information that we have for many trials, meta-analysis, and so on. Um, before asking if there are questions, I would like you um, to briefly report on uh, the position of... Um, uh, the European societies regarding left main, because uh, as you know, there there has been a lot of debate on which is the preferred revascularization technique for um, left main bifurcation lesions, I'm meaning distal left main bifurcation lesions. After the Excel data, after the Nobel study, um, you know that there was a, quite a big turmoil between the sergeants and the and EIPCI in suggesting either uh, as a first choice of revascularization, PCI or surgery. Also, not in in very complex syntaxes, uh, um, distal left main bifurcation. So, can you just sum up uh, which is uh, the position of the most important uh, European societies on this? About, uh, you, you mean about uh, PCI versus cabbage in terms of left main PCI and uh, yeah. left main bifurcation, uh, yeah. bifurcation lesion. So, uh, yeah. uh, so, so according to the, uh, according to, uh, to the, the, to the guidelines from 2018 and, uh, about uh, revascularization, when we have, uh, when we have it, it depends of the of the of the type of uh, by it, it depends of the syntax score mostly, and it depends of the diabetes. Uh, so those two two two, uh, two points play play a, a role in those in those decision. If you have a low syntax score. Uh, we can uh, cabbage and PCI are two uh, two refer method to treat uh, left main uh, bifurcation lesion. Uh, however, uh, if there is the high high risk uh, syntax score and uh, diabetes, there is the recommended methods to refer patient to the cabbage. And uh, according to the um, to the what kind of uh, what kind of treatment should we use? In uh, in PCI techniques in the bifurcation lesion of the left main, so uh, I would say the the provisional stenting is not worse in compared to to DK clock DK crash, but also it depends on the type of the bifurcation. So it's from this is my my yeah. opinion for okay. the technical point of view. Okay, yeah, the, the, there have been a lot of uh, um, papers editorials. Uh, uh, and also polemics between cardiac surgeons and interventional cardiologists about uh, about this. Um, there was a review of the of these guidelines by a committee, an official committee of EAPCI and uh, the, 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 the AICTS, which is the uh, scientific society, the European Scientific Society of Cardiac Surgeons, about distal left main, and it was published a few months ago. And uh, they clearly say that uh, if you have a high syntax score more than 32, the first choice should be surgery. 
unless there are contraindications, uh, not feasibility of the uh, uh, porcelain aorta, the same contraindication. But without these, first choice should be surgery. On the other hand, for lower syntax scores, up to 32, um, the, the PCI has been given a 2A class of indication and a cabbage a 1 class of indication. Uh, because despite there was no differences in terms of mortality in uh, all the big trials and the meta-analysis, there was uh, always uh, um, a positive effect of surgery in terms of uh, lower needs for reinterventions, point number one. And there is also a reduction in spontaneous MI after surgery during the five-year follow-up as compared to PCI. So still, with the current techniques, it seems that there is still a, a little advantage, not for strong endpoints, not for stroke, not for death, but for these minor endpoints, still clinical ones, uh, in favor of surgery, also in lower syntax score. So this is currently the position of AIPCI and AI CTS Association. Um, any comment, any further question about uh, this very interesting topic well managed by Wojciech? Dr. Krupal, you joined us. Yes, sir, yeah. Uh, so, Do you have uh, any comments on this? Um, I might have missed a little bit of the you know, lecture, uh, but if, if the syntax score is less than 22, uh, so which is uh, like one should go for PCI or uh, one should go for surgery in left main bifurcation. So we um, can use the PCI. Project, please, please. If there is no, if there is a left main with very low syntax score, and there is no diabetes, there's a class one to perform the PCI in that in that lesion. So. Okay, okay. Let yeah. me show you this, but I think it's worth showing the paper that you may want to. Uh, read later uh, yeah this one i'm going to share this okay can you see it yes sir, yeah so this is a review of uh, ACTS uh, um, of the recommendation of left main at patients at low surgical risk, okay, so without the contraindications and the anatomy is suitable for both of them. So mm -hmm. it's a nice paper with many items. Uh, you can agree or not disagree or, or, or do not agree, but uh, in the end, this is uh, the final recommendation that for any syntax score between zero and 32, cabbage is class one and PCI is class two A. Okay. okay. So I'm this is the, the but you shouldn't. Uh, um, you you should read this because if you uh, I had a chance of reading this uh, quite recently. If you go and and read, you can see that mortality no difference totally. Hazard ratio is one point one, and the confidence interval at zero nine zero one one point three. So for for um, the, the stroke is the same. There is a higher risk of spontaneous MI uh, in the PCI arm. Okay. As I said, uh, so which is my point and my position because uh, we also have to to be honest. I would not uh, uh, propose uh, cabbage in a low syntax score patient. So I totally agree with uh, what Wojciech was saying before. Uh, no, well, well, I, I would uh, try to push for PCI, but uh, honestly, I think it is worth also to. Uh, to tell the patient that there is an alternative that has been investigated in uh, clinical trials and the characteristics of PCI are different to those of cabbage and so on. So this is something that usually you don't propose to a patient with a single vessel disease or two vessel disease, not proximal lesions and so on. But for cabbage, since the guidelines are saying that uh, cabbage is class one and PCI class two A, I think it is uh, honest to propose this to the patient. In the end, I think that now we have the skills uh, and the, the techniques to manage safely for the patient this type of lesions. 
uh, we have to say that uh, October trial showed a reduction in uh, in the clinical endpoints uh, using uh, uh, intravascular imaging uh, as compared to only angiography, whereas uh, many of these trials in this meta-analysis didn't use intravascular imaging uh, um, by routine. Uh, we also have published ROC2 study showing a reduction in the clinical endpoints, well, improved clinical endpoints after using either OCT or IVUS for left main and geoplasty. So um, we have to be honest, uh, if we perform a state-of-the-art angioplasty now with, it, with a mandatory use of intravascular imaging for the left main, I think that uh, there is no uh, big difference uh, with cabbage. Okay, and it's easier for the patient, lower pre-procedural MI, uh, lower duration of hospitalization, and then so on. So we have to take into account all of these uh, important points. Okay, so yeah. Um, actually, we have, we have to give them in writing many times that uh, yeah. which is the better one. Um, and suppose these patients are uh, presenting in, with ACS. Is it the same thing or like, or we can go ahead with PCI because the patient is having ACS? Yeah, this is a great point. In this uh, review of the guidelines, uh, they state that this is true for uh, stable patients or stabilized ACS, which means that if a patient is arriving in a cath lab uh, with a STEMI involving the left main or with a you know low blood pressure, not completely stable ACS patients or unstable angina, non STEMI, I think that uh, PCI should be the first choice. Okay, uh, and depends what kind of uh, unstable patients STEMI and and STEMI sometimes uh, it is it is big difference. We, for example, ye yesterday I I had kind of the case that there was the occlusion of circumflex. And I also performed the IVUs of the left main, and there was the uh, MLA was lower than than six. So I firstly I opened the circumflex, and later I perform also the uh, the provisional of the left main. So it is it, it was quite a different different uh, uh, strategy, and we should I may, in my opinion we should not put. All of them to the one one bucket to uh, as as the one type of the the patient because sometimes we have the stable and STEMI patients so in 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 and multi vessel disease and left main and maybe cabbage is better for the, and diabetes and uh, cabbage could be better uh, for those kind of the patients. Yeah, I agree. Recently, actually, I had one patient who was diabetic and uh, uh, presented with ACS, but the, no ST, ST elevation MI, but non-ST elevation MI. And uh, it was like the, uh, like proximal to mid kind of uh, full length uh, uh, lesion in the left main, uh, around 90, 95% block, very narrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, was, he, he was diabetic and uh, also mid LED lesion. So this case was like, we did PCI, but uh, like to explain them uh, with evidence, like uh, is it PCI better or CABG would have been better? Uh, if the patient is arrived with a 99% uh, uh, distal left main, uh, any uh, signal of instability for me is an indication to perform a, an imaging-based immediate uh, uh, PCI. I have a few doubts about that. It was also because you have to take into consideration this fact. I had a dispute two days ago, at uh, three days ago, at a meeting uh, in Jakarta with a cardiac surgeon. Um, we should also take into consideration the fact that we work uh, on a on a daily life uh, in a different uh, subset that one of a very stable patients uh, enrolled in clinical trials. I mean. Uh, if a patient arrives with an MI, even if it's not a STEMI, but it's a non-STEMI, um, uh, quite often the surgeons prefer to let it cool down before operating this patient. Okay, So days will pass after the angiography and the situation can also deteriorate. 
these patients are usually not enrolled in clinical trials. Another example, uh, quite often these type of patients arrive on the table with dual antibiotic therapy, okay? And in many cases uh, with ticagrelor or prazuran. Uh, usually, at least in Italy, but I think uh, the vast majority of cardiac surgery would not like to operate this type of patients where they have to do uh, at least two bypasses, if, if not more, uh, on board with on board to un do two antiplatelets. So they usually prefer to stop, wait for five days uh, or six days uh, with the uh, anticoagulation or whatever. So um, this is quite complex for this type of patients. So in real life, uh, uh, I think that we should, uh, for syntax score up to 32, we should propose uh, the angioplasty solution in a you know, highly trained and expert center uh, with a good knowledge of intravascular imaging, I think that we should propose PCI in two thirds of the cases. Okay, thank you. Any other question? No? So if not, I would like to thank Wojciech Thank for you. this uh, very nice presentation and uh, also with this discussion it was very interesting for me um, yes Jagan also joined us a little bit late but uh, from the next lesson we will do it at five so it will be easier for you to join us I don't know for Jagan because he's uh, yeah yeah no uh, because he's uh, uh, three and a half no, maybe four and a half hours away and eh, Jagan I think so. It will be almost yeah, nine. four and a half hours now. Four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, four and a half hours. So, Sorry, I was late. Hope... I got stuck in my physiotherapy. Ah, okay, I just okay. had a hamstring injury. That's why I didn't participate in last two lessons. Okay, okay. Don't worry. I'm not voting you for this. So I hope <laughs> that the 5 p.m. will be okay for you. Uh, for there are two lessons per month, so I think it's it's feasible. Yeah, yeah. okay, so, yeah. yeah, thanks. It will be a pleasure for us. Okay, so thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Wojciech, again. And uh, I think we can close this.